Hi, this is Glenn Isherwood bringing you an on the ground report from Down Under. I'm here in Melbourne, Australia at the International Union for Geodesy and Geophysics General Assembly, uh, IUGG for short. Uh, there's two LIM members here, myself and Aaron Isherwood. We've been here for a few days now, it's nine days in total, and uh, this event brings together uh, eight disciplines, eight unions of scientists that cover the two subjects of geodesy and geophysics. So there's a lot of discussion going on about seismology, uh, volcanology, right through to how our solar system is behaving, uh, uh, etc. So uh, for our report, I wanted to emphasize the type of uh, intervention that we're having specifically on the questions of this, th these recent earthquakes and the, the, the need to change what we're doing to become more informed and more in tune with what our galaxy is doing so we can predict earthquakes. Uh, so we've been doing two things here. We've been getting out a DVD of the latest uh, videos from the La Rouge Pack basement and we've been getting out uh, a booklet with our material uh, which has been well received by everyone that we've been talking to. So now, there's a few things I want to cover in this uh, report. The first one is the the showdown around this question of earthquake precursors and looking at the science, the physical science around earthquake predictability. There is a reaction from the established, uh, acceptable, what, what is considered the acceptable seismology establishment, uh, or, or you could call it the priesthood, that predictability of earthquakes and precursory science to earthquakes is rubbish science. And you have two, basically two, a, a split, a philosophical split between two categories that are self-described as being the pessimists and the optimists. Now on this pessimist side, people like David Jackson and Walter Mooney, these are the guys in the field of statistical probability forecasting for earthquakes. These are the ones who have, uh, have been uh, carrying on the usual type of earthquake uh, forecasting where you've seen has failed to prepare, uh, the, uh, prepare uh, countries for these recent types of earthquakes, these larger earthquakes. And so on the one side you have them, and on the other side you have the optimists, or the self-described optimists around this question of predicting and precursory science, uh, which includes people like Uzanov, uh, Pulinets, uh, Biagi, uh, the many others that I could mention uh, that we're intersecting here. And now what you have with this pessimistic crowd is the typical bread-fed scholar mentality that Friedrich Schiller describes. Uh, and on the other hand, you have those who are looking for uh, a sense of a Kaplerian approach, taking what we don't know, looking into the physical causes. Instead of just trying to plot things on a graph, instead of just trying to uh, get a statistical probability, looking at science as it should be about looking into the actual causes of things. So there's a real parallel here. There's a parallel to what we're right now confronting with economics. In economics, you have what LaRouche and Lyndon LaRouche has been doing for decades, which is focusing on the physical economy. Physical economy meaning we've got to look at what is human being, what are our, what is our relationship as human beings to the galaxy? Are we making sure that we're up, up, going from lower platforms of scientific capability to higher ones? Now, this is a physical measure. And on the other hand, you have those who are in the, uh, the traditional economic forecasters who rely on statistics and rely on an assumption that we cannot know how this universe works, all we can do, do is follow the laws of pleasure and pain. And similar to what is reflected by these pessimists in the field of seismology who say, yes, we're in a galaxy, yes, we're in a solar system, they, they do have an effect on our Earth, but we can never know 
how they influ influence earthquakes and, and even if that's just rubbish science. So those are the, those are the things to recognize. This is a philosoph philosophical fight that goes right across disciplines. So what are some of the uh, anomalies that we've been finding with these recent earthquakes? Now, uh, we've had over the last years, uh, continuing emphasis that the current system does not work. Uh, let's look at them. You've had Sumatra in 2004, uh, a magnitude 9 earthquake that killed over 200,000 human beings. You had Chile in 2010. You've had Christchurch this year. Uh, you had Haiti in 2010, which also killed hundreds of thousands of people. You've had the recent Japan earthquake in a region which you would think would be completely prepared for such an event. However, they didn't see this coming. Now, why is that? Well, statistical forecasting of earthquakes can only give a 1% probability for these types of events. It is too uncertain, and that's uh, reflected by everyone. It's totally inadequate. And what you see coming out here at this event is that these earthquakes have many uh, anomalies and precursory phenomena uh, in, that have been explored and they're look, being looked at by no means uh, conclusive at this stage, but that is uh, what's happening. One thing that was mentioned by uh, uh, Walter Mooney was that the Haiti earthquake of 2010 defied all the expectations of the field in seismology. It didn't follow any of the normal rules, the normal models, it, and for that they can't explain it. So that, that, that begs the question, you know, if these types of earthquakes occur and they have great implications for all of the historical uh, models looking right back to paleo, uh, back in archaeological history for earthquakes, that all of this has to be re-looked at because of this one earthquake showing that it defied all our models. So if that's the situation, how can we find a comfort in this, this method, this statistical method? Obviously we can't. So one thing I'll just add to this question of the recent earthquakes. You have in Italy the, uh, the ongoing trial of scientists uh, in connection to the L'Aquila earthquake some years ago. And I put out a question, is the reaction in L'Aquila from the government there a reaction to this stale, uh, fixed system of probability that is not working? Is there right now a push and is there a sense that we could know more if we broaden the discussion, if we stop acting like bread-fed scholars, if we go in and look at these precursory phenomena from a serious standpoint? Now that hasn't, so that's an open question. Is that why this is occurring now? Now, two days ago, uh, my, I was able to attend a, an interesting showdown between the pessimists and optimists here at this event. And it was very clear from the very beginning of that that there was, n there was, a, there was no intention of resolving this philosoph philosophical uh, disagreement between statistics and physical phenomena. You had in, uh, and what, why, why do I say this is a political operation? This meeting that was decided, it was designed to bring together the union of IASPI, which looks at seismology in the Earth's interior, was designed to look, to bring them together around a common uh, motion, put out a, a unified voice of, of where we have to go from here. And it broke down. It broke down. This event was moderated by David Jackson. Um, and you had, he described himself there as a pessimist. And what you saw was, with, the, with these scientists in attendance, the discussion was never meant to be successful. It, was, it occurred days before uh, Professor Uzanov, uh, Hobara, and uh, Caldera, and other scientists were scheduled to present their investigations on precursory phenomena with earthquakes. This meeting, to, to put out a general voice, occurred before the discussion had even taken place. 
And there was a real resistance against talking about any form of predictability of earthquakes at that meeting. And that's, that's, that's the general atmosphere you have. So um, under that type of oppression and under that type of uh, resistance, um, it's, is there any wonder why we're still at this point? So that's one thing. This is the general dynamic that we're encountering. And we are organizing uh, both sides. We're organizing and communicating to both sides to make sure that we can elevate the discussion and bring out this philosophical uh, problem that we've got. And uh, we've got uh, several more days of, of uh, in, uh, organizing here to do. Uh, plenty more to be uh, reported on later. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks uh, for tuning in.